We're here, everyone's got their juice boxes, everyone's ready to go. Hello, Storm Gators. Before we begin, we wanna let you know that some of the biggest upgrades we've been working on will be coming in future updates. For example, you won't see major progress on our campaign missions in this update, but work is happening behind the scenes and includes things like updated dialogue, facial animations, our in-engine cutscenes. You may notice some light testing of these facial animations in this build if you decide to revisit those early campaign missions, but most of the work is yet to be done. And we don't expect our campaign mission improvements to be ready for prime time until 2025. Okay. Setting the level expectations immediately. So the first paragraph, this is the strongest paragraph, right? Uh, so they are out of the gate letting people know, listen, you're not gonna see some of the biggest things we're working on yet. So setting the, setting the stage of anticipation. We're also actively working on performance and optimization. This work will continue throughout EA Early Access and beyond. Some hardware configurations and situations will see improvements before others, but this will be an ongoing effort. Okay. So these are the two things that they're saying, hey, we're not there yet. Sure, no problem. Uh, now it's time to present Stormgate's first content update, 010. In this build, you'll find all sorts of new things to play with. Whether you're looking for a new hero to try out or maybe a new versus map to play, we've got you covered. Here are some of the few, here are just a few of the things coming in this update. A new celestial hero, weekly mutations, a new versus map, visual, Upgrades for maps and terrain, Amara glow up, customizable hotkey modifiers, huge. Improved pathfinding, improved observer and replay UI, new spooky boneyard custom map, full patch notes, balance updates, and balance designer commentary. So I will probably go through these first ones pretty quickly because I'll be honest, I don't super care <laughs> about some of these things, but it's still very good for the health of the game and I'm very glad they're doing it. Uh, this is how to, this is how to, uh, this is how to update it, etc, etc. Okay, build spotlight. New hero, Castiel. We're introducing a new celestial hero in 010. His name is Castiel, the orphan of Wintros. Lower nerds rejoice. As the ruthless and amoral warrior, regent of Arcos, there is no hope in escaping his nether sword. Devoted to the pursuit of victory at any cost, Castiel has abandoned his people's traditional reverence of animus. Wait, what? So wait, is he an infernal? Huh? Wait, what? So is he supposed to be an infernal turned celestial? Okay, I don't know how that works, but... He now drives the sovereignty of Arcos toward a secret heretical objective, the collection and weaponization of Animus in order to destroy all his enemies. Be it through his will or at the end of his lethal blade, the culling has begun. Welcome everybody. If you're just joining us, we are gonna be reading the patch notes. You have nice angel, now you get nasty angel. Oh, okay, I see. Animus is not just an infernal thing. Oh, got it, all right. Everyone can play Castiel for free with progression cap at level five. Players who purchase the ultimate early access pack on Steam or the ultimate founders pack on Kickstarter or Indiegogo will have Castiel's full progression unlocked and don't need to purchase him again. Players who don't own Castiel can fully unlock his progression, including his unique gear from the in-game store or purchase an early access pack on Steam, which unlocks Castiel's progression as well as lots of other playable content and cosmetics. So this is this is nice because again this was a, they got a huge blowback from this um, because they introduced wars and it was paid for and people were like what the heck I thought I was gonna get everything um, and very smartly I think Frost Giant said whoops uh, okay let's give you the next hero for free so here is that hero Castiel represents quite a twist of celestial gameplay taking a page from the Infernal playbook. He absorbs Animus from the fallen enemies to power his abilities and to charge up his signature arc ship variant with its soul cannon. Here are his core abilities. Dark fire, charges forward, does damage, soul blade, ignites another sword, 40% attack speed for five seconds. What's up? Okay, go ahead. Um, this is a surprise Mrs. Goblin visit. You only get this when she needs to craft something. So we're gonna, what are you crafting? gonna start painting there you go there you go have fun okay uh attack speed buff 80 damage in a cone in front of him 
Is there a Mrs. Goblin emote? There's not actually a Mrs. Goblin emote. There's a token emote. But Mrs. Goblin makes so many, so few appearances on the stream. I, I don't know that she wants one. Maybe, I'd have to ask her. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, and Coley Unworthy. Castiel sacrifices a target unit, his own, or an enemy's, restoring 30% of his health. 10 energy per supply of the unit. He gains four stacking bonus damage. Costs us, okay. Da -da 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 -da. Channel, uh, f firefall cast shell channels for a second before warping up to the fleet above and rocketing back down to earth with a call in the dark flames. Upon impact, the ground explodes around him, dealing 200 fall off damage in a large area of effect. Sorry, this was just too many numbers and words and things to read, so I'm just not gonna skip that. Sounds cool though. In addition, Castiel's affinity for celestial vehicles means that Vector and Saber cost 50% less to produce. Conversely, Castiel is not known for his subtlety, so Celestial, Scout, and Caster units, Cabal, Animancer, and Scanner each cost 20%, 25% more to produce. One of the coolest things about the new heroes is when we can create signature units that modify the faction's tech tree. Okay, this is so much. Jesus, it's a lot of co-op. Not known for his subtlety. And then there's the Kuzuri. Okay, let's see, what is that? Has a special variant of the Kree called Kuzuri, which is stealth while out of combat. Cash shield begins with a single Kuzuri at the start of each game. The time repulsors upgrade makes it so they can't be slowed. And that is pretty funny. Uh, the Eradicator is Kalashiel, Kas Castiel's variant of the Argent. Its polarized shield protects the Eradicator, which while it's above 50% HP, Reducing incoming damage by 20%. The time shift upgrade creates a time altering vortex at the target location. This field slows the movement of enemy ground units that pass through for 2.5 seconds. Arc ship variant can unlock the ability to harvest biomass at level 8, which turns trees and corpses into resources. Each harvested tree grants you 20 luminite, and each corpse is worth 20 ethereum, which seriously shakes up his approach to the resource gathering compared to his baseline celestial armor. That's actually kind of cool. This is so far the coolest thing I've read. That's that's really neat. Uh, progression, you unlock several powerful new passive abilities which you can take advantage of. Better Sovereign Watch. He becomes a Cascade Field. He's a thirsty guy. Animus Shields. Wow, they are really going in deep with all of the things here, which is cool. And then... You get his gear system, which a lot of people didn't even know was in co-op. And to be honest, I didn't know it was in co-op either. One of the pieces of feedback that I've seen is, and I think this was in Sal's video, was like, this gear system should be way earlier on because it's by far the coolest thing in co-op. Which I think is neat. I think it's cool. Okay, so you get the gear, you get all that stuff. Neat. Sorry, guys, I'm not as interested in co-op, so I'm, I'm gonna, I just skimmed it for the most part. Uh, weekly mutation challenge for co-op play. Dude, co-op players eating well this patch. We're adding weekly challenges. These challenges come with a unique set of conditions, giving three-player co-op teams a chance to earn big XP boosts by tackling new exciting scenarios each week. Think of it as a way to keep things fresh while earning serious rewards. We've revamped our XP system in other ways too to help make co-op progression feel better. You're proud of co-op, Andy. Co-op gear is fun, co-op is fun. Co-op is the best version of the game. I know it's like by far the most popular uh, game mode of StarCraft 2 is co-op, like far and away. So I really think there's a lot that Stormgate can do with co-op here. And I think they're already starting to flesh out those things quite a bit. Some of the challenges you may encounter include allied units have plus 100% energy regeneration. Allied units have plus 50% speed. When an enemy unit dies, it spawns an enemy fiend. When any unit dies, sorry. Every two minutes, an enemy barracks spawns somewhere on the map kilt before it unleashes a devastating attack wave. When an enemy unit dies, a corpse explodes after a second and a half. Enemy unit dies, it resurrects two seconds later with 50% health, movement speed, and attack speed. Hashtag zombies. All enemies have plus 50% movement speed. The fog of war is disabled for all players, including enemies. How the fuck does that work? Don't enemies not have fog of war, like, at all? Huh. That's weird. Uh, allied players have plus 100% construction speed. 
So it's interesting that some of the modifiers make things easier. It's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Weekly challenge. Weekly challenge. So they're up to six co-op heroes now. You know, sometimes I always like to look at these images just to see if there's anything that shouldn't be here that we can see. You know? This dev test was called Culp Fiction. That's pretty funny. <coughs> All right, cool. New versus map, Furious Resolve. So this is uh, this looks awesome. We've obviously already seen this on Twitter, spoiled, but it's very, very cool. We're adding a new versus map to our rotation called Furious Resolve. It's a macro-based map with four random spawn locations where each player has access to three highly defensible bases. The center is still fairly open to handle major battles. And the reward for claiming it is a siege camp that'll help turn the tide in your favor. Nice. Yeah, this is a really cool looking map. Obviously, it's um, it's fighting spirit. <laughs> but I'm curious to see how it does, uh, like, to have a super traditional RTS map, like one of the most classic represented in Stormgate, and how that how it plays, you know? Like, StarCraft 2 mechanics being, like, very, very defensible bases... I'm I'm curious. I, I'm very curious how it's going to turn out. Because we've had that a little bit. There's been a, quite a lot of map variants in terms of how defensible your bases are. They should have they should add uh, big game hunters. Yeah, that'd be cool. Visual and lighting update to the environment. After listening to all your feedback, we have done a visual pass on the environment of our maps. We've made several changes, including updating many of the terrain textures, lighting angles. We're also changed to make the terrain more readable and pop. This accentuates the normal maps and helps add shine to the terrain. Very cool. I, yeah, I mean, honestly, it looks it looks way better from the comparison pictures we've seen. Just more texture, more feel, more more detail, and I I love seeing that. Love it. Amara character model update. Amara has received a glow up. Based on community feedback, we redid the proportions of her entire body. The head was remolded and re, uh, re, uh, reto apologized. Okay, come on, guys. What the fuck does this mean? What the fuck does that mean? Third person singular. I still don't know. Re-topologized? Okay. Re-popologized. <laughs> yes, I did read it that way on purpose. Uh, to properly support facial animations. This includes the addition of eyes, teeth, and a tongue. New texture and shader pass finishes off the head styling. The hair was remade from scratch to read better from a closer camera. Last but not least, animations were created or edited to support the new body proportions. Although new Amara will be the model used throughout the gameplay in our in-engine in in -engine cutscenes, she will still temporarily remain as original Amara in our pre-rendered videos. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. This includes interludes such as The Good Man that take place right at the start of Mission 1 of the Vanguard campaign. We're planning to update those as well, but switch over involves some extra complexities which will be included in a future update. I think that's fair. I love that she's just taller, <laughs> like like a foot taller. Like that's the funniest thing to me. <laughs> I kind of want somebody to make the meme of like make make original Mara much shorter, like tiny Keanu Reeves next to giant Keanu Reeves. Like, don't talk to me or my daughter ever again. Okay, customizable hotkey modifiers. Absolutely insane. This is probably the shortest part of this article, and to me, might be the most important thing. 5'10 versus 6 foot. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. While the hotkeys key, hot remain command based, so I think that means that they are designated to the command card no matter where the placement is. Uh, as another player requested feature, we have added the ability to add any number of modifier keys to your hotkey configuration. You can now modify your hotkeys with any combination of control, shift, alt, and so on. 
Try it out, let us know how it feels. Can't wait. Can't fucking wait, TBH. That's gonna be huge. I don't even care about the command cards, to be honest. Like, the actual QWER, ASDF, ZX, CV. I'm all about the fucking shift one through five. That's the only thing I care about, really. So, very cool. Very, 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 very cool. Improved pathfinding. We've heard your feedback about pathfinding issues, especially with weavers and other large units. I could not have said this. That would be like one of my number one units plus the dogs. In 011, 010, we're rolling out improvements to our push priority system, making it easier to navigate maps and reducing frustrating moments when units get stuck or act unpredictably. Nice butterfly hat. This is an imp hat, sir. <clears throat> um, reducing frustrating moments when the units get stuck or act unpredictably. This is a quality of life improvement. We believe will have a major, will have a big impact for players who love tight tactical control. I do love me some tight tactical control. More pathfinding improvements will be coming in future updates. Cool. So I don't know if this means that they're not doing as much right now for the small units and they really specifically focused on larger units because that's what they've called out here. But um, we'll just see. We'll have to see if it's if it how much better it seems. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're not at the one v one patch notes yet. Observer and replay UI improvements. The goat of goats. The user interface for the observer and replays now adds a match timer, map names, and map score for tournaments. We've also added support for different aspect ratios. Let's go! That's awesome. That's actually so good. Even just yeah, like this is great. This is great. Oh, and it shows, uh, it's it's all good, guys. It's like, it, this just looks, it looks good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Boo, observers. No, it's good. New custom map, Spooky Boneyard. As we head into spooky season, we've added a new custom versus map called Spooky Boneyard, where a zombie spawns after every unit dies. They live for a long time and generally stay in place where the death happened. Taking a creep camp sends a small pack of zombies across the map at your opponent. Available in both 1v1 and 2v2, this nighttime map is a bit chaotic and it has revealed some unexpected strategies. You can find this encounter under custom games. This is very cool. And bro, part of me is like, all right, it's time for finals to be a best of seven. And the final map is Spooky Boneyard. Hey, any friend of this final, guy is a friend of The John finals Gabbacat first Gabbacat. game Gabbacat. is played on fucking Spooky Boneyard. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do that. That actually might be the funniest shit in the world. Probably not for this one, but we're I, I guarantee I like I don't guarantee you, but I would love to do that for the next one. What's up, Flabuster? Thanks for the raid, man. Better than Fruit World. It's so good, dude. Alright, here we go. Patch notes. I wish I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read these. I'm I'm they did a lot of stuff to co-op. I'm really happy to see that they did that. That's so cool. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, look at all rejoin. This is cool. Uh, apparently if you DC you can rejoin. That's awesome. Uh yeah, okay. And then this performance related change, maximum supply cap and co-op for all factions has decreased from 300 to 200. We're exploring the impact of this change in addition to the technical work we are doing to adjust the overall performance. Fair enough. Band-aid band -aid fix or band-aid improvement so that they can try and actually fix it. I will say there's so few games that actually get to 300 supply, it's nuts. Co-op Andy's out. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, guys. Campaign. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very cool. Super cool. Read all of that for sure. Super, super cool. Versus Furious Resolve. Isle of Dread updates. Okay, so we read this. Got that. Uh, the main players... Wait, sorry. The main player's main base... That can't be right. The player's main base is smaller and easier to defend. The nearest expansion location is closer to the player's spawn location. Double Therium nodes have been added near the vision camp. What is the nearest expansion location? Is that the double Luminite or is that the Luminite Therium? This, this is like a, you think it's Luminite Therium? Great, that was the one that I was doing anyways. <laughs> Lum Therium, double Luminite, no longer super close. Ah, uh, okay. 
Because there's trees blocking. Have you seen the updated map yet? They closed an entrance to the main. Oh, not at all. Okay. I haven't gotten that far. Custom. New map spooky boneyard. New zombified boneyard is now available to play in custom. Audio. Overall, the game volume has been increased by 50%, which should in help improve our audio clarity. Holy shit. I fucking hope this does not apply to the trees, because that shit almost blew out my headset the first time I killed a tree in Stormgate. Good lord. The image is in the observer preview up above. Oh, is it? Oh, that's tricky. Oh, it is. Oh, it's so hard to see, though. And I'm, of course, I'm fucking blocking it. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, it's fully treed off here. I see. So, uh, this is easier to see. It's uh, okay, it's fully treed off. But you could just break through the trees if you really wanted the double luminite. What is happening here? Who's who is red? They are not winning. Flower sound increase pog. <laughs> double luminite is also treed off. Oh, it is. What the heck? Okay. What the fuck? This makes the map crazy looking. So you ha- okay. Huh. Alright. Seems cool. That was the biggest complaint I had about Isle of Dread is it was way too easy to attack. There's like 18 paths to get attacked from. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Alright. Uh, wait, is this co-op? Who Megalol cares? Just kidding. Battle should be less confusing. Fewer attack sounds will play with large unit up counts. Updated exo sounds have been increased to feel more impactful. New custom announcer voiceover when playing Castiel. General lighting and visual improvement updates. All maps and modes have received a visual pass to improve lighting. Smart attack. New option added to reduce the need to choose between move orders and attack orders. What does this mean? I will never, I'll probably never turn this on, but I'm very curious what it means because I just a click and it's just like by a, by reflect, like, there's a new, new friendly option to play one handed. It said you can move and attack with just the mouse. Right click always a moves or something. Okay. All right, interesting. Hey, you know, accessibility, guys. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Pathing and push priority updates. Weavers can once again path over units. We did it. We did it, guys. Where is the thing I'm looking for? I'll risk the DMCA. I'll risk it. I paid my dues time after time. I've done my sentence. But committed no crime And bad mistakes I've made a few I've had my shells and kicked in my It's been so long. It's beautiful.
fucking W, boys. Let's go. Weavers can once again path over other units. Hell yeah. That's so amazing. That's so incredible. Large units can once again push smaller units. That's great, too. Magmadons can actually push through when you... Uh... This was actually very impactful. Uh, microing stuff was quite difficult because you would want to, like, move your army back, control click your Magmadons or your Brutes, and move them to the front. That was really... It, like, did not work that way. Units cannot push other units that are holding position. Units cannot push other units that are channeling. Ah, okay. So, like, Hex and channeling... You can't push through them. They'll, like, try to walk around. All right, that's fair. Fellow VMware enjoyers spotted. You wish StarCraft 2 had that, so Ultras could just push to the front. Yeah. I cannot remember the last time I opened VMware. UI updates. Area of effect targeting. Area of effect abilities will now show a targeting reticle of the affected area, allowing better precision. This is great. This is fantastic. Magadons and Brutes will always move to the front now. Yep, they will passively start to push their way to the front. If I'm reading that correctly. So it should be like how they were before they changed. Uh, essentially, they made this change. So I think they just basically figured out what it was breaking. So what would happen, guys, is larger units would prevent the hexen from channeling it would actually just prevent i believe units from channeling in general so if a large unit like the hellborn or the uh a magmadon or a weaver even touched a hexen that was channeling it would immediately push it and the hexen would stop channeling so i think that the um this thing here units cannot push other units that are channeling was their fix for that a yeah, concave of guns would stop brutes from getting to the front, but now brutes will still push forward. Yep. So it's just going to make for a more natural, like, fight. Where you're not like, oh, you're trying to micro everything just so you can get shit to the front. It was, like, infuriating for Infernals. Specifically, I would say. Because, yeah, our, we are so melee-based. So, anyways, this is fantastic. This is a huge... This is, like, an Infernal buff right here. <laughs> this should be in the Infernal section. Let's be very honest. Uh, who cares about the Vanguard or the Celestials getting this? This is like a direct Infernal buff. <laughs> Wait till he sees the Plague Axe change. I've already seen it. Uh, it's coming. I know. I have takes on it. I have takes on it. UI updates. Area of effect targeting. This is very good. Unit info panel improvements. Units now display exactly how much bonus damage they do to various tags in the unit info panel. Unit stats that are changed by upgrades and buff will now correctly be reflected in the unit info panel. Cool. Tooltip improvements, they're just making tooltips more accurate. Sure. Offline invites, invites can now be sent to Steam friends that are not actively playing Stormgate. This seems like a uh, offline invites. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, various quality of life improvements and bug fixes. We've been working hard to fix a variety of issues, but here's a few worth mentioning specifically. The versus selection screen remembers which faction you last queued for. Finally, the five Vanguard games that I've lost because I immediately left will never happen again. I'll never have to look at that stupid Vanguard race when I'm trying to click my Infernals. Fantastic. After completing a campaign, you're also 0-5. Yeah, I legit have five losses because I accidentally hit start and like couldn't cancel fast enough. After completing a campaign ca uh, co-op or custom game, you'll now be properly sent to the correct screen. This is good. I wonder if this works for observing too, because you would always get sent to a tie. So I'm, I'm curious how this works, but I, I imagine it would now be sent to the right spot. Remove the extra login with Steam step on startup. That's nice. Unbound hotkeys no longer list none and now appear empty. Cool. All right, guys. <clears throat> Here's the big ones. Balance notes. This is what we've been waiting for. General. All tier 1 to tier 2 upgrade times have been decreased from 40 seconds to 30 seconds. All trees are now light. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is, again, this is massive. This is huge. <clears throat> it's like legitimately a 25% time reduction again. They're making tier 2 upgrade fucking is like... It's, you're gonna start on tier two if they make it any lower. <laughs> they 
if they make it any lower, it's again you're gonna start on tier two. Light units, not light forestation. So warp cores now do a bonus damage to trees. Ah, okay. I was gonna say, wait a second. So now everything can just walk through trees? Wait, what the fuck? Okay, no. Creeps generally have more health between 14 and 68% more. Oh, they just want to kill my video, man. They want my my creep camps video to just die. God damn it. It's all different. <laughs> Fuck. Round it up to the sex number. Ah, yeah, you cowards. It didn't even have to be. Nobody would have fact-checked you. And the base taking video. God dang it. Slime health increased from 120 to 140. Ooze health increased from 300 to 400. Shadow Mastiff from 100 to 120. Shadow Demon from 250 to 420. 250 to 420. Holy shit. Bruiser health from 270 to 320. Cleaver health 140 to 160. Piper health 140 to 160. No change for the Skull Squisher. That's the Siege Camp guy. All right. Creeps generally give 16% less bounty at level 1. Slime... 30 to 25, 30, 30 to 25, 25, 30 to 25. No change on the shadow demons. That's the vision camps. Bruiser from 60 to 50, Cleaver from 30 to 25, Piper from 0, 30 to 0, 25, Skull Squisher 60, 30, 50, 25. Okay. Peeps now scale to give more bounty veterancy and animus when they level up. This is, it's more accurately reflects their additional power bonus. Level 2 bounty increased from 100% to 125, 250, 375, and then 500 at the highest. Okay. The Shadow Massive Bruiser, Cleaver, and Skull Squisher creeps will now prioritize ground unit over air units with their attack. That's fantastic because I, if I get another one of my Skull of Shedda's killed by a Shadow Massive, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. So that's very good. Uh, also, like, watching Celestial players lose their freaking Morph Chorus to Shadow Mastiffs was hilarious when there was an Argent nearby. So I'm sad to see that go, but I'm sure the Celestial players are happy. Fix an issue where oozes and slimes did not reduce armor of surrounding units when they were killed. Oh, boo. <laughs> oh, no. Fix an issue where a Shadow Mastiff creep was dealing too much damage to air units. Okay. Reduce the duration of the active speed camp buff speed towers from 20 to 10 seconds. Stealth units can no longer claim capture points. Okay. All right. So overall, creep camps, massive nerfs all around. Uh, massive nerfs in, in wanting to take them. Obviously, the creeps themselves got buffed, but like way less attractive to actually like creep like as a 100% priority at level one. Creep camp mains and shambles. I Is this enough to fully like kill the don't even expand until the whole map has been creeped meta? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But these do seem like tiny, tiny amounts now. So five, you're gonna literally get 125 from this. It's enough for one brute. Oozes is gonna be 50-50. Shadow Mastiffs, that'll be another 125. Like, this is hard to do at level 1 even. And then the Shadow Demon has no changes for its bounty. Okay. You think only the level 1 creep camps got buffed? Creeps generally have more health. They, they didn't say level 1. They just said generally they have more health. And they're, so they're going to take you much longer to do. And you're going to need you're going to need more units to do them. So I wonder if it's possible even... I don't imagine it's possible now for the Lancer to want to solo a health camp. So I don't think we even need to send... Like, I wonder how hard this is to do. Can you do this with one Brute and a, and a Hexen? Can I do, like, a, a health camp or a speed camp? I'll have to wait and see. I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with the numbers. It's making me think no. An extra 20 HP... Per Shadow Mastiff is an extra Brute hit each. You probably can do it, but you'll lose the Shadow, you'll lose the Brute for sure. And you need to do like pullback micro on your fiends. Lancer can still solo slimes if your math is correct. That's like one more slime in HP at the health camp. 
Yeah, we're gonna have to see. Because they also, hold on, they also nerfed the, the Lancer. So let's keep going, guys. So overall, I think this is good because the meta was so like, don't expand, don't expand, don't expand, just keep creeping. Okay, Vanguard. Let's let's now read the, the faction specific changes here. Habitat and solo habitat. Habitats and solo habitats now have the heavy tag instead of the light tag. Oh, why though? But why though? It's to stop dog versus dog. It's for the mirror. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I know the game. I know the game. Dogs with like two shot habs. Okay. Solar habitats will no longer auto cast on habitats or solar habitats. All right, that seems good. It seems good. Sentry post build time decreased from fifty-five to forty-five seconds. All right. Machine lab. It's not a very interesting update, so it's like, whatever, I don't really care. Cost decrease 100 to, one, to 150. But this is fucking crazy. Bob, t build time decreased from 20 seconds to 17 seconds. That is fucking wild. That is actually fucking wild that they would do this. That is a 15% speed boost. That's nuts. I guess it like, I guess with the creep camps, it maybe makes sense. It's now equals to infernals. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand that. Like, I get it because the way that charges work and such, but that's still, that's a big, that's, that's huge. Yeah, I'm curious to see Monk's explanation for it. I assume though, it's because of the infernal charges system. Celestial's just in shambles. <laughs> They're just in shambles. Scout build. Okay, so here's the dog. Build time increase from 13 to 18 seconds. It's a pretty extreme time difference there. Five seconds. Initial damage decrease from eight to five plus three versus light. Ugh. Excuse me. So this is going to mean that they're way worse versus lancers and versus brutes. And is the argent light? I don't think it is. Uh, Argent is heavy. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so this makes them very bad versus, like, the tier 1 units that you can make for Illuminite only. Beryllium Claws upgrade improves the scout's damage by plus 8 versus light, down from plus 16. Scout selection priority changed from 101 to 119. Okay. Wow. Alright, so absolutely massive nerfs all around. The dog, I think, is dead. Um, because this also destroys their ability to creep. And I think just destroys their ability to actually go around and deal damage. I do think it will be potentially possible to do like a scout all in. I feel like that might be a thing. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But I think it's going to be way more committed due to the time, and it's going to be way less effective. So I feel like they're encouraging not making the scout for sure. Lancer. A cloak, burrow or cloak? Actually, a tier 3 scout upgrade would be kind of sick, you're right. That would actually be really cool. Lancer health increase from 240 to 260. Holy shit. Armor increased from 5 to 15. Holy moly. No longer have on damage. To da okay. All right. All right. All right. There's the rub. I'm like, this is a literal unkillable unit. I will never kill another Lancer again. Okay. It seems fine now. <laughs> Lancer's damage increased from 10 plus 5 versus structure to 10 plus 5 versus structure plus 5 versus light. Yeah, this the dog is the, the dog is fully removed from the game. The dog is now fully gone. Okay, mitigative guard upgrade no longer further reduces damage taken to uh, minus four and said it now gives them the two, which this is still very good. This is still very good. A static two damage decrease is, is awesome. So you're still gonna really wanna get this if you're gonna make any amount of Lancers. 
Exo, damage decreased from 13 plus 7 versus heavy to 12 plus 6 versus heavy. Dude, okay. All right. What's up, Theory? Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. We're going over the patch notes. Actual god tier infernal player who can tell us all the shit that we're bad at and all the stuff I'm getting wrong. Dog seems very dead. Pathing changes seem like direct buff to infernal, but I haven't reached infernal yet. So let's 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 wait and see. Medtech master training, which unlocks system shock, now requires a central command down from high command. Okay, I don't even know what this does. So, uh, yeah. Time for some Donkey Kong Country, boys. Vulcan, impact thrusters upgrade has been removed. Its functionality, which increases the range of jump jets from X to Y and adds a stun to jump jets, is now innate on the Vulcan. They are trying to get people to make the Vulcan. It's a dispel plus speed boost. Ah, I need an AoE. Oh, okay, okay, okay. From X to Y, baby. That's right. They're like, fuck it. Numbers don't matter. Nobody makes this unit anyways. Nobody actually knows. <laughs> Hornet. Damage dec uh, decrease from 13 plus 13 versus light to 13 plus 4 versus light. All right. So this is a direct. Uh, this is directly because of prisms. Graven. Graven cost decrease from 125. Yeah. To, so it's getting a 50 Ethereum buff. So that's good because nobody makes this unit. And helicarrier bombing run range decreased from 40 to 25. I'm I'm pretty all right with this, I think. It was pretty mauled worthy to just be sieged by helicarriers and get killed by a unit I can't even see. <laughs> so that's nice. All right, Infernals, the true faction we care about here. <clears throat> Nightfall infestation, which is a completely worthless uh, ability currently. Infall station uh, now slows down enemy units by 50% for three seconds. Okay, this is now a very good to do. This is now excellent. All right. Knife infestation cooldown decreased from 90 to 60, so I can do it once a minute. Okay. Yo, I'm here. This seems very good. I like this a lot. Infernal not having a single way to slow down enemies other than stunning them with Magmadons or... I guess dropping the Harbinger on them made it very hard for our very melee-focused armies to do too much. So this is good. I like this. It actually makes Nightfall Infestation like a top bar ability that has any use. Shadow Cleft. Cost decrease. Yep, nobody's making it, so that makes sense. Brute. The Brute Sundering Soul Frenzy upgrade has been removed. Fiends created by a Brute Split now just gain a 15% increase in movement speed. Wow. Okay. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Soulforge just send its upgrade no longer requires the upgrade that they removed, obviously. No longer requires you to build a greater shrine. It can be researched immediately on building a Hellforge. Soulforge Ascendant's research time decreased from, increased from 60 to 120, so two minutes to make up for the fact that you don't need a greater shrine. So actually, So technically, yeah, I mean, the timing wise, it might take longer than if you could just make it off of a greater shrine, but cost wise, I think you, you're still benefiting. Okay. Sundering soul craze upgrade no longer requires sundering soul frenzy upgrade. So, okay. Ah. My brain. So wait, does that mean the tier three upgrade for Brutes is now on tier two? You can have Brute Army at 350 with this change, which the Brute Army is very good. I mean, you weren't really making it. It's just trying to say, pop it all down one tier. The upgrade that was removed is no longer required. Right. So wait a second. Soulforge... But it's saying the Soul Forge just... What the fuck are these upgrades called? I think that's what I'm getting. Hold on. Just, just... Everybody... Stop talking. I don't know what the fuck the upgrades are called. So, this is what I need to look at. Alright. So, this has been removed. Soul Forge Ascendance. 
can now be upgraded immediately and it no longer requires a greater shrine. Sundering Soul Craze doesn't need this. So now the Brute has a tier one upgrade and a tier three upgrade, but not a tier two upgrade, if I am understanding this correctly. So you need a you need a shrine and then an elder shrine, which is probably good because this ability is fucking wild. This ability is crazy. Okay, so that's good. All right, that's fine. <clears throat> All right, I already know what this one is, guys. I have opinions on it. <sighs> Adios mio. Gaunt. The Gaunt's plague axes upgrade will now only apply in fest if the target if the target is on shroud. This is so impossible. It's never gonna happen now. Yeah, it's gone, dude. It, so no, it's it's here's the thing. If I'm reading this correctly, guys, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Here's the reason why. Plague Axe's upgrade will now only apply in Fest if the target is on Shroud. So, so let me let me get some clarification here. I don't know if this has been clarified. When it says the target is on Shroud, does that mean the thing that the, the Gaunt is attacking? So let's say Gaunt is attacking a Lancer. The Lancer has to be on Shroud. Yeah, this is completely fucked. You're never gonna do this. This will never happen. This will never happen now. It seems like impossible. Here's the reason why. Effigies when spawned off Shroud have five HP. Have five HP. So you literally breathe on it by any unit. One single unit needs to attack it and the Shroud is gone. So you can't just like attack an army and like, haha, I'm gonna drop an effigy on them. And then, oh, oh no. You know, you, you're better off using my asthma. So let's just, so basically. Basically, guys, what this means is the gaunt will not infest off of, like, when you attack, you're not going to be able to infest aggressively unless you have the tier three top bar ability going. That's it. Effigy has to be in your army, not theirs. No, 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 no. The target, if the target is on shroud, if the target is on shroud, so that means what I'm attacking needs to be on shroud. It doesn't matter if the gaunt is on or off shroud. The target has to be on shroud. If, if this was, if the gaunt is on, Right, you're saying the effigy is in your army, then it's harder. Yeah, but the 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 AOE of the effigy is not big enough, I don't think. It's not going to be worth it, in my opinion. Basically, put it this way, like, 30 seconds, like, can you drop effigies in the fights? Yes. Do, like, do I think that's going to be valuable to do? Probably. But you're, I think you're honestly now better off. I like, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to wait and see. Like, I don't even think it matters that the Gaunt has infests at all now. Like, you're just, you're, you're getting the Gaunt for this. And if it happens to infest, like, yeah, sure, drop an effigy, which we were doing any, anyways. Be which you, sh I said, rather, I should say you should be doing anyways. This is a massive nerf. This is like, this is huge. <laughs> This is huge. Um, it has slightly better damage versus light and slightly, uh, slightly better bounce versus light, and that's it. So I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see, man. Like, is there ways you can do this? Of course there are. You can do harbinger plus effigy, but like, think of the amount of thing. Like, think of the amount of shit that you would need to do in order for that to happen. Oh, hey. My skin is green. Know what else is? Cash money. Spend it on this Twitch uh, channel. Reminder that Rushy's text to speech is only two bits. Yeah, mine is a hundred, brother. Goblin King, my friend. Apopto Haggle. You never want to make a gaunt again, but you have to for anti air. It feels bad. Ah, <sighs> yeah. This seems. I think. Okay. Here's my opinion on this, guys. 
without seeing this played, this absolutely fucks the gun. Like, it, it, like so hard. You're gonna see better trades versus, like, Lancers, for instance, but you will never infest another Exo, and you'll never infest Celestials. Like, that will legitimately only ha never happen again. Again, the only way to do it... Um, people complain about Infernals being too centered around Infest. Yeah, but what are they replacing it with? Like, that's all well and good, but like, what am I, what are my other options? You, this is just a static nerf to the Gaunt, right? Better everything else. I mean, the Brood is better. I give you that. The Magmadon got nerfed. Like, we still have other things and the Weaver is better, but like, and so is the Hellborn. Hexen is worse. So they're basically nerfing Infest. Very hard. Um... I'm gonna get to those other ones in a second here, but this is this is my opinion on this, okay? Right now, I think Infernals is in a very strange spot of being a ladder dominating race. Like they're overrepresented in the top 500. You can see that here, but we're not winning. Like there's there's two in the top 10 right no i haven't seen an infernal win a tournament in weeks and that's with all of the all of the quote unquote bullshit infest right so i'm not saying that this change is bad i'm not saying that this change is bad i'm just saying we don't really have anything to replace it with all the top 15 infernals haven't laddered in weeks either because it's too hard Inferno P Apologist. Wow, wow. Now, I mean, I understand there. I think I understand the reasoning behind it. It's, again, because people were just crushing the ladder with, like, Infest. I, I want to see how this shakes out. Let me, let me read the rest of the patch notes, guys, before I give my full take on Infernals, okay? Let me just read the rest of the Infernals. Magmar on Trample Sun duration decreased from 0.3 to 0.15. So that's a nerf. You're 50% stun time. Uh, Hellborn. Attacks will not target the ground if a target enemy unit walks out of range. This is legitimately exactly from my patch notes video that I made. Is this exact change. So I'm very happy that they made this change. Very happy that they made this change. Uh, Weaver can now walk over other units. Movement speed increased for to 2.5. Shroud walk passive trait increases to 60%. This is also exactly from my patch notes change. Uh, so these two units, they changed in exactly the way I wanted them to change them. So that is incredible that we called that so perfectly. I think these are even the literal numbers that I used. I think it was a slight weaver movement speed increase, walk over other units, and then nerf the passive so that you still get the same. Um, okay, Hexen. Miasma energy costs increase from 40 to 60. Miasma cooldown increased from 0 to 15 seconds. Cooldown begins at the start of channeling. Harbinger. Seismic slam upgrade now additionally increases the Harbinger shroud coverage by 100%. Hmm. Okay. Spriggan. Cost change from 75-75 to 150. So it's more Luminite heavy, less Ethereum heavy. Spriggan damage increased from 2 plus 2 versus heavy to 3 plus 3 versus heavy. So like a 33% increase alone. Um, okay. Infernals. Very incredible changes for the Hellborn and the Weaver. I think f probably fine changes for the Magmadon. I don't feel like this is actually all that big of a deal. Eh, maybe it is though. I don't know. Half the sun duration seems like a lot. Maybe 0.2 would have been more appropriate, but I, I'm not sure. They, they may have something else. This makes the unit actually like usable. Still interrupts channeling. Yes. Yeah. The mag will still... In it still stuns. So, yes. Um, incredible brute changes. Like, these are... This is a f massive, massive buff to the brute. Uh, they killed the gaunt. They just did, guys. They killed the gaunt. Why do you even need to make a ritual chamber now? Like, yeah. Hmm. You kind of have to still make it, though. But you're just going to make one in the early game, I think. 
to literally just have the charges available in case they make air. Like, I don't think you're even going to make gaunts anymore. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I just think this is too far. I, I think if the gaunt was on Shroud, this would make me feel better. Like, if the nerf to this was the gaunt has to be on Shroud. Um, instead of the target. The target being on Shroud is so... That's so hard. That's so... That's so impossible. Like, that will just never happen. What is the... What is the, um... What's the HP of the Harbinger? Like, is it time to, to like, go triple Harbinger slam? Two hundred plus sixty-five, so two sixty plus sixty-five, so three hundred and twenty-five and ten armor. It's a heavy unit, so that means Exo sniped that shit out of the sky. IVI, you're right. Defensive shroud makes it hurt yourself. Holy fuck, that's crazy. I did not even think about that. I actually did not even think about that. Oh my goodness, that's bonkers. Never drop shroud. Never be on shroud in Infernal versus Infernal. Wow, what the fuck? Hmm. I yeah, I don't like this. I don't like this change. I think I've decided. I don't like this change. Especially with that pointing out of the Infernal versus Infernal. I didn't even think about that. That makes the matchup awful. Mmm. Mmm. So literally, you could be defending, and you're usually incentivized to, like, tow into Shroud so that you get the white health bonus and your opponent doesn't. But now that literally is going to deal more damage to you because it activates your opponent's infest. I think this has to change. I think this has to change. I think it has to change to the other way around. That makes absolutely no sense. That makes absolutely no sense. So what, you're gonna drop an effigy on your opponent's army in Infernal versus Infernal? That's fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah, this is too far. I think this is too far. I understand, again, I understand why they did it, because the Gaunt has been so dominating for so long. I think if you flip this around, I'd be happy with it, though. It would make it so, like, if the sh if the Gaunt has to be on Shroud instead of the target unit, you could still, like... You would still have way more positional play that you could do versus the Gaunt. But, like, and it forces you to tactically use slash save effigies. But the way this is now, it makes Infernal versus Infernal fucking weird. Uh, and it means you you can't ever defensive shroud versus uh, versus Infernal. And like you have to drop effigies on your opponent's army instead of your own army, which feels bad. Yeah, I don't know. Infernal versus Infernal seems freaking wild now. We'll have to wait and see exactly what it means. The other changes I'm genuinely fine with. Like, I think all of them are great. I'm happy to see the Spriggan get such a massive buff. I It's so weird that it's versus heavy. This is good. I feel like this is supposed to be to, like, counter Hella uh, carriers and stuff, but... I don't know. I know that they also deal bonus damage to buildings now, right? So, I, well, no. Their structure... Well... Structures, I think, are heavy as well. Yeah, they're all heavy. So these now deal six damage per hit to structures, so it deals like 18 damage in attack. That's pretty nice. All right, what is the Spriggan? Hold on, do we need to start making this unit? Light. 160 plus 40, 200. Can you even infest the Spriggan with Gaunts? I don't think you can. 
Can you? Can you infest the Spriggan with Gaunts? Air units can be infested. No, 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 but they have to be on Shroud. The target has to be on Shroud. They heal from Shroud, so you think it can still work? Fuck. Spring can get white health if it can be infested. Yeah, all right. I was gonna say, that might be actually like an unintended, very cool interaction. I don't know, we'll see how this works out. I think that the standout best changes here, the Brute is a very unexpected, very cool change. Uh, the Hellborn is an incredible change and the Weaver is an incredible change. These three are like shining stars to me. Hexen, to be honest with you, already felt kind of bad. And I know that's wild to say uh, because you could literally just not attack into Miasma. Like I drop Miasma and then you walk away. I, you you were already needing to make like 20 hexen to just get them on their side of the map but like you could just not fight in it so i don't know we'll see if this this just makes the hexen even worse and now there's a cooldown with it as well our mid game infest is like gone we basically don't have any like i think this hexen nerf is so much that it's it's gonna be just really hard to infest at all and then the Gaunt change is like, do you even upgrade the Gaunt outside of Infernal versus Infernal? Like, is that just money you could be spending on other shit? Here's the problem with this though, right? Like the Gaunt is still like your number one DPS and here's why. Until you can afford a very expensive army of like a lot of Hellborn, <clears throat> the Gaunt is still gonna be your bread and butter damage because they're ranged. Right? They're the only ranged unit that we have in the beginning of the game, in the middle of the game, besides Hexen. And Hexen don't deal damage with auto attacks. So... Yeah. We'll see. You think they needed a range buff if Infest, if Infest got this nerf? It does seem like this is just a huge swing away from them. Uh, curious to see. I mean, legit, maybe you just make, like, fucking four Harbingers and slam them into your opponent. Seismic slam. I mean, like, what does that even... Like, I know what it does. I know it stuns. But how big is the, is the stun radius on this? Because I actually don't... I actually don't know. Allows Descend to stun surrounding enemy ground units... For one second. Maybe it's just like the quadruple harbinger into Magmadon drops. With seismic slam. It just seems like so much shit you need to do in order for this to happen. Damn. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know, though. This seems like this is way too... This is way too much. I understand, again, if you're gonna do something like this, I feel like you gotta give them something else because they're our primary DPS that we have until we can get to tier three. So like, how do you survive? Maybe the brute changes are enough. Maybe you just cheese every game with brutes. I don't know. Brute cheeses got buffed, that's for sure. I mean, the problem is, like, eventually you're gonna run, like, the brutes are so big, you just can't, you simply can't attack with all of them, right? Like, and that's where the gaunt comes in, because they're reliable damage. Dying on your own shroud is gonna be the new dog meta complaint. Just don't be on your own shroud, forehead. Alright, anyways, let's move on. I, I think there's some really great changes here, and I think the gaunt change is fucking wild. Um, if this is the way they want it to be, I think they should have reworked Effigy a little bit then as well. Give it more than 5 HP. I don't know. Make it immune for the first 5 seconds it spawns. Like, something. Uh, like, give me, give me something so that I can be aggressive. Because as it is right now, there's just nothing. This is a shitload of changes for just a month, by the way. It is for sure. 
Uh, we'll see how this affects things. I think this is gonna, I think like, it's gonna be so hard to win with Gaunts though now. I mean, we still have other great tools, so maybe, maybe we just don't make them. I don't know. We'll see. All right, I gotta keep moving on. I, I can, I can stay there forever. Got drops in the worker line is back on the menu. It's always been on the menu. Nothing has changed. If anything, it's just like, it, it, it's never been gone. It's always worked. You can always do that. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> you still have to get the upgrade in order for them to apply infest while the target is on shroud. Like, you don't na you don't passively have this. Harbinger are way too expensive and risky. I mean, it is very expensive. 100, 150? Yeah, we'll see. We're gonna see just the, the, I don't know, the Hellborn Weaver. I still think you just make Gaunt. It's not gonna be a good unit, but maybe you just make it anyways. Gaunt on Shroud instead of Gaunt on target. Shroud on target would work in the Gaunt drop scenario too. Unit that spread Shroud when It kind of does that with the Harbinger, but the Harbinger is not. I will say the 100% Shroud coverage increase that might be enough. I don't know. Maybe you can just slam in your own army. Like, does it even matter? And you just shroud. I don't know. It just seems so hard to do. And then you effigy off of that, maybe. But, like, here's the thing. You do this, and then the opponent just walks away. And you're like, well, all right. You need, like, the flanking harbingers now. Give us tier three units with a shroud aura. That'd be kind of cool. Like none of this prevents your opponent from just literally walking away from you. Do that in the enemy infernal and fest your army. Well, yeah, 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 you wouldn't do this in IVI. Born to shroud, gone as a fuck, infest them all, 1989. All right, Celestials, Let's just, we, I have to move on. I have to move on. I've already been talking about this for an hour. <clears throat> Sovereign's Watch. Fix an issue uh, where Sovereign's Watch is losing some damage output until it finds a new target. After this change, Sovereign's Watch will deal much closer to its full potential versus a large number of small units. Attack means now prioritize non-creep units over creep. So you can actually unironically nerf them from being able to take that first creep camp, which is kind of funny. Purify now only dispels debuffs on friendly units and buffs on enemy units. So it doesn't provide energy anymore. So that's actually kind of huge. You're not needing to debuff any, like, dispel debuffs anymore because I can't infest your army anyways. But okay, that's cool. Morph Core. Fixed an issue where Morph Core couldn't be rallied to illuminate mines in Fog of War. Sure, that's good. Arc ship cost decreased. All right. Collection array supply cost increased. Prism supply cost decrease. People were spamming collection array and not making prisms anyway, so this makes that a little less attractive to do. Uh, Alright, sure. Aeon Gate, the ability I've still yet to see anyone in the entire game use. They are trying desperately for anyone to, to use this. It, they literally buffed it by 50% in all regards. What does it do? It lets you teleport your units. It's like a Nidus Worm. Ascension Matrix now requires a Starforge or a Legion Hall instead of an Arc Station. Retaliation Matrix, Core Ascendancy, I don't know what any of these do. Okay, I don't really know what this means, so somebody explain, like, what this actually does. That would be great. Thank you. Arjun. <clears throat> Alright, so massive Argent change. Health decreased from 210 to 180, so 30, dam 30 HP decrease. Movement speed increased from 4 to 4.5. Oh, so now I really can't run away from Argent, so that's good. Base energy regeneration decreased from 0.5 a second to 0 a second. Out of combat energy regeneration increased from 0 to 2 per second. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Well, how long does it take for you to get out of combat? That's my question. The photo restoration upgrade, which increased the movement speed of Argents by 0.5 and increased out of combat energy but regeneration by one has been removed. Okay. So they, okay. So now they just have that. In fact, they have a buffed version of it because they removed base energy regeneration. 
Okay, so they're also just getting their tier one upgrade. That's so funny. <laughs> Brute getting tier one upgrade, Argent getting tier one upgrade passively, and Vanguard getting their dogs nerfed. That's hilarious. Max energy decrease from 50 to 30. All right. Game is best in tier two. I agree. New upgrade, photo capacitors. Increase the energy pool of Argents from 30 to 50. Research at the Guardian Nexus, no other requirements. Okay. So they're faster. They have bigger out of uh, combat energy regeneration, uh, but they have their max energies reduced. Long shot module now increases Argent's range from by three up from two, so it can shoot farther away. All right, so pretty big Argent buff, I would say overall. <clears throat> the energy nerf is interesting. I'm curious to see how many shots that means they can get. Cree, health increase from 190 to 230. Damage decrease from 16 plus 8 versus light to 14 plus 6 versus light. So keep in mind, guys, HP is the best survivability buff you can have in the game. So I think a lot of people mistake armor. For being like, that's how tanky units work. It's not. Health is way better to have. Oh yeah, and health nerf too for Argents. That's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, so going up 40 HP is very, very big. You don't know why they buffed that? I think they did it because the Celestials don't have a way to tank currently in the game. Cabal. Debilitate duration decreased from 40 seconds to 25 seconds. Debilitate movement speed debuff decreased from 50% to 25%. So they nerfed the Cabal. <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting. Vector. Fixed an issue that caused recall to sometimes fail. Fix an issue with delta jump and recall being inconsistent. Okay. Saber. So this is the Laz Cannon uh, tank. Now requires Arxation instead of Ascension Matrix. Movement speed increase from 2 to 3. Movement speed bonus from Mass Accelerator decreased. Okay, so it's staying consistent. So a slight movement speed increase. Actually, not slight. A pretty big movement speed increase. Actually, a massive movement speed increase. It's faster than the Weaver now, you fuckers. You bastards. And you can make it off of a, uh, just a tier two instead of needing the Ascension Matrix. All right. Animancer gets a cooldown as well for Dark Prophecy, so that, that falls in line with the Hex and Miasma. Archangel. Meteor Strike can now kill trees when an Avatar State can't be pushed by Magmadons during Trample. When an Avatar State weapon... So does this mean the Magmadons can't move past them? Is that how it works? After Avatar State ends, the Archangel will now retain its current HP. For example, if it was 500, uh, it'll... Okay, so this was, yeah, the Archangel change. This was like a bug, it seemed like, so that's good. This is also from my patch notes. Um, I did in my patch notes fix an issue where you could walk through Light Forest. Yeah, this made no sense. <laughs> uh, so I did call for this change. I called that change, I should say. Not called for. It's not like they were, like, listening necessarily to me. Sad to see that there's no indicator for this, and also sad to see that you can't group stop a group of Hexen from channeling all at once. So it seems like that's not changed. You still need to individually select and stop or move. Um, I think the Saber buff to speed is nice. I still am very curious how this is going to work. Granted, the number one complaint for the Saber was that... Um, Fiends were too good against it, and, and they weren't really dealing dealing with them well. Uh, but, like, Infernal now is just going to have way less Fiends. Because our mid-game Fiend generation is just, like, gone. But then once we get to the Dragon, it's going to be, like, overwhelming again. It's like, gonna, it's like nothing is going to have changed, basically. Um, I called also for... I called a Kree buff to its health specifically. I think my change that I proposed was a slight HP buff, I think up to 205 or maybe 210, and then an armor buff. So this is just straight up better than what I what I was thinking they were gonna do. 
Uh, and then I think I took the light tag away from the prism, but they essentially accomplished the same thing by nerfing the hornet. Interesting to see that Purify was changed, too. Okay. Alright, this is the commentary. Uh, Kevin? Tell me, tell me what's up. Salutation, Stalwarts of the Storm. Since our last update, we had one of the coolest Stormgate tournaments ever with Beomoth Stormgate Nexus number one. Uh, where is Goblin Cluckfest? Excuse me. Uh, that must clearly make be a mistake. I'll definitely make sure to email them. Okay. Well, in the tournament, we saw one of the most epic series ever in a laser versus parting and one of the coolest individual games ever in a laser versus Parcival. Percival, sorry. Uh, which showcased some awesome micro potential possible in Stormgate. It's been a few weeks since our last update since we then we've both been gathering and digesting your feedback. Since this content update includes the most extensive balance patch we've ever done, we'd like to take a new approach and individually go over the, all the major changes. Changes. Super oversight. Yeah, I can't believe they didn't mention the Goblin Cluckfest. Sorry, two Goblin, two Cluckfest. That's that's nuts. General, can I post Shrine Arc ship the speed increase? We'd like to bring tier two units and upgrades into the game a bit more quickly to fight tier one options. As an extreme example, while our Vulcans are theoretically a counter to vectors, they are not realistically a counter to vector rushes due to how far up the tech tree they are. Hey, any friend of this guy this change is a result friend in players of John having Gavagat more of early Necro game Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Zuchi. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging out with us. Okay, fair. I mean, yeah, tier two. It just seems like they want you to get to tier two, like, as fucking fast as possible. <laughs> Machine Lab Shadow Clip Ascension Matrix. Similarly, we feel like some of our highest tech tier options in the respective upgrades are not being used slash researched often. While we suspect a large part of the reason is inherent strength in these units, we'd also like to grease the wheels a bit more and encourage players to choose teching more often by reducing the cost of higher tech tier buildings. Creeps, so the creep change. We'll be rebalancing creeps with a special focus on how important it is to creep in the early game. And how all or nothing they can seem. I agree with how I agree with that all or nothing sentiment. In the mid game, while we feel like creeps are not gameplay warping and fairly balanced, we'd like them to feel more interesting relative to their importance and impact. This set of changes is intended to do the following: slightly increase the difficulty and decrease the reward given by creeps in the early game. Create more variance in the time of taking creep camp, such that the same set of units can't capture every creep camp easily back to back. <laughs> Maintain and or increase the bounty given at higher levels. All right, read it in Kevin Dong's voice. How do you know I'm not Kevin Dong? Well, you know I'm not, because I would never have done that to the gaunt. Another relevant topic to talk about here is that while the early game focus on creeps certainly has its issues, one positive thing they did do is speed up the early game pacing economy to a rate we were very happy with. So we're likely to end up with a slower early game than we'd like. I like that they're calling out that this is probably going to make a change that they don't like. But they are making the change anyways because they, I guess, want to see. <clears throat> we view these changes as short-term fixes and we'll be taking another hard look at both creeps early game pacing in the future. Vanguard, Sentry Post build time. Sentry Post initially took longer to build the most static defense from other factions due to the fear of multi-building being too powerful in a tower rush situation. Okay, so they're just like, that doesn't seem to be the case, so we're just gonna not worry about that. Okay, fair. Bob. Build time decreased. Similarly, we wanted to bring Vanguard worker build times more in line with that of the Infernals. Initially, we wanted to give Infernals more of an advantage in this department due to the need to sacrifice workers to build structures. However, we currently feel Vanguard is disadvantaged in this trade-off trade -off due to the charge system overall gives Infernals more flexibility over worker production. Not being able to build workers during tearing up while charges are able to recharge. Cost of the imp being built into infernal structure costs. Okay. Is it though? I The only structure I can think of where this seems like it is built in is the shrine. But, alright. Scouts. The nerfs. Scout was too dominant in all matchups because it was too cost effective in a variety of roles. Creeping harassment against key infrastructure... 
and direct combat against grounded light units. While we're certainly, while they're certainly not an all around unit, this combination of traits made them the clear choice for early game, especially among high level players. We felt this most important in verse, uh, van versus van, where the Lancer was insufficient of a counter and Vanguard versus Infernal, where Gaunts received the damage nerf against light units in the last patch. Well, don't worry, we won't make, an, we won't make Gaunts anymore. So no need to worry about that. We'll never be making that unit again. In addition to the changes listed here, we're also adjusting the Habitat, Lancer, and Gaunt, which should help with Scout Dominance. Mm. I see the nerf of the dog, like just, yeah, of course it favors Gaunt a little bit, but like still Brutes seem like it's that's the way to do it and Fiends seem better. You love how VVV is an ASCII emote. Lancer buffs and the slight nerfs. Lancers have been one of the most polarizing units in our game. While they're incredibly powerful as a tank against Infernal Gaunts, they're very ineffective against a large number of Vanguard Exos or Celestial Origins, two core units in their respective factions. We believe this is one of the key reasons matchup win rates have been so historically polarizing. <clears throat> in addition, we're looking to give Vanguard players stronger tools against scouts and a tier one answer to the Kree. Gaunt is buff, free units nerfed. No, but that's a ner that's a Gaunt nerf. I mean, like to see it any other way, I think is crazy. Because even if you didn't get free units, Infest was a significant part of their DPS. Here's a summary of the relationships we're targeting with these changes. Versus Scout. Combined with the Scout changes, Lancers will be much more effective versus the Scout. Versus Gaunts, much less tanky, much less tanky and bold, and more lethal. Large battles involving lots of Lancers and Gaunts will be much less one-sided. Versus Fiends, less tanky, more lethal. Kree becomes a solid counter, even in low numbers. Argents become slightly tankier. Versus Exos becomes slightly tankier. Can fight them head-on if there's not good focus fire micro. Exo. Exo damage decreased. We still feel like the Exo is too centralizing as a core mid-game Vanguard unit and would like to redistribute some of its power elsewhere across the faction. Okay. Alright. Uh, Medtech. Medtech training. Yep. We wanted to provide Vanguard with a more solid counter to debilitate and allow for some flashy plays on tier 2. I wish I remembered what these... I, I know I was told what this does, and I just don't even recall. Vulcan. So they just have that innately. This was a rarely used upgrade, so we decided to bake in this capa capability into the Vulcan baseline. This also removes an obstacle to the more powerful Tier 3 Vulcan upgrade. Dude, do you remember... I mean, like, I'm just actually thinking of how changed the Gaunt has been for Infernals. Just in the last, like, three months. Gaunt went from passively having Infest on its attacks, always, like at the start of the game, to needing to upgrade to get them, to now needing to upgrade to get them, and the target needs to be on Shroud. I'm waiting for the next change, where Gaunt Infest can only be against targets that are on Shroud, and also, like, flying or something. I don't know. What more can they do to the poor Gaunt? <laughs> Hornet. Yeah, the damage. Hornet was too powerful against Prisms. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Graven. People aren't making Graven, so they wanted to buff it. Due to, uh, internal, during internal testing, we tried it on Tier 2. It was incredibly powerful. Due to the necessity of requiring detection and static defense at every base to ignore to counter it. We removed it to Tier 3. During our early access release, it doesn't see much use. While we still believe it's powerful, it competes with the heavily with heavily with the helicarrier, which is seen as both more impactful and easier to use. I mean, both of those are incredibly true. We're going to try. We are going to uh, to try to slightly lower its cost as a first step, but we'll consider adjusting its abilities in the future if this change isn't sufficient. It's just like the Graven and the Spriggan do things that nobody wants to do. Like, that's the problem. That is the problem. Graven, like, Sticky Bomb, like, sure, okay, it does some damage. Infiltrate, it deals a bunch of damage and is, like, these are, like, f these are, like, plays, but, like, 
I don't know, man. It just seems like why do those things when you could just make like extra helicarriers? You don't have to do anything tricky and it's way less risky to do it. Like, I don't know. Graven is a campaign hero unit. Yeah, I, I just, I don't feel like it does anything useful. Like its main thing being infiltrate is just not, I don't know. It just doesn't seem good. They need to completely rework Graven. I think they need to do that with the Spriggan too. Like the debuff that the Spriggan does is just not good. Like nobody cares about it really. I, I don't think. Like, it's fine, it's nice, but it's like, when am I actually ever going to be able to do that? <clears throat> I don't know, we'll see. They've sort of got a pretty big buff, so we'll see if it's maybe used now. Helicarrier. So the Helicarrier got nerfed. Do we want a Helicarrier to be more in range of targets they were trying to bomb? If the Helicarrier continues to be too powerful in the future, especially against Infernals? We'll look to adjusting other values, such as the health of bombers, or granting Infernal more tools to deal with this. Make spring and attack bounce so it slows more things. They don't want to make the Mutalisk, though. And I understand not wanting to just literally copy-paste the Muta. Like, I get it. But, like, the Muta was very good at what it did, which was a harassment-style unit. The Spriggan seems like it's supposed to counter heavy... Heavy things that are hard, like, that are, like, on their own. But that's just... Like, right now, Stormgate, like, there's just not really a, like... Like, I don't know... Big heavy units don't just fly out on their own, usually. We'll see. I'm not sure. Or, like, they're supposed to kill buildings when you really want to just, like, kill workers, I think. Maybe, ma I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Like I said, the Spriggan just got a buff, so maybe that's good enough. 30% damage increase is not insignificant. All right. Nightfall Infestation. This, this makes the ability more impactful while giving it a potential counter against Vanguard infantry balls, especially as they grow in size. <clears throat> At the same time, there's still plenty of counterplay, either dodging it or dispelling it. Brute, all the brute changes. Sundering Soul Frenzy didn't feel very useful, so we decided to remove it and instead give it to give a more useful upgrade at tier one, which allows tier one health for just to be more viable. I'm I'm down. Alright, explain to me the gaunt change. Tell me what- tell me how I'm supposed to feel, Kevin, because I feel bad. While we're happy with how Infest is performing in other parts of the game, the ability for Gaunts to constantly infest enemy units is causing all factions to constantly need a way to fight fiends at every stage of the game. <clears throat> okay. While most factions are able to reliably do this, Celestials in particular are struggling. And it felt restricting that the game had to be balanced with the idea that all factions needed consistent AoE damage against fiends. <clears throat> we still think Gaunt's infesting enemy units is cool and adds a lot of identity to the Gaunt, but we want this to happen in more specific ways. At the same time, we've been looking for more opportunities to inject interesting interactions with Shroud, so we ended up with a conditional on Shroud activation requirement for playing axes. After this change, you'll still have a variety of options to spread infest with Gaunt's. While creeping, you can summon an effigy to get five fiends against certain camps. While harassing, you can use Gaunts in combination with Harbingers. In the end game, Shadowfall can be used to spread infest to your opponent's entire army. We realize this is a significant nerf to Gaunts. At the same time, we feel Gaunts aren't as effective against light units as they're intended to be. So we're also giving them some additional anti-light damage to compensate. I mean, this is a thing. It is a huge, it is a fucking massive nerf. All this explanation still makes sense with Gaunt should on Shroud applies in Fest, except you don't get IVI weirdness. Yeah, they didn't they didn't talk about the Infernal versus Infernal part at all, which to be fair, I didn't even think about until Theory mentioned it, and that is like fucking wild. It allows them to buff the Gaunt and Fiend in different ways though in the future. Okay, here's what I here's 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 my opinion. Okay, here is my opinion, okay? If you don't want the Gaunt to infest, then remove the infest upgrade. Just do it. Like, it is, this is so unbelievably hard to do this now that it's just not worth it. It's just going to be better to, like, to, like, just not get that upgrade, I feel. Just, just, just take Plague Axes away, then. Take this away. Give us something else. Make Gaunts do something else. 
They did remove infest before. Okay, that's fine. Like, I don't care if infernals can infest on, like, every unit, right? Like, I don't... Like, that's fine. I don't need them to do that. But it feels like they're trying to skirt the issue of, like... Making... Like, the gaunt is... I'm sorry to say, dude, it's just worthless now. Like, I'm not gonna summon five animus for five fiends. Like, I, I I don't think I'm gonna use an effigy to make to get fiends. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. But thinking that you can you can attack your your enemy army with harbingers is wild. That's just never gonna happen. It just won't happen. I really don't think it will. Maybe a player is better than me, but it's just too much APM for me, I think, to try to do that. In the end, like, and then, yeah, Shadowfall is nice, but, like, the fact that my tier 1 upgrade is not going to be useful against attacking my, my enemy until fucking Shadowfall is crazy. That's crazy. That's so, that's so hard. Maybe they make Shroud Effigy cost like one Animus or zero and you spread it around more. Again, though, to make it because I have to have my enemy on it that I'm attacking with the Gaunt, that doesn't even really fix it. You would need to make it like so much different. You need to make the Effigy so much different to the point where they're just like trying to make it so that you have to do extra steps to get Infest. I don't like this change overall, and not because they're making Infest harder. I'm unhappy with it, I think, because they should just remove it then, and they should do something else. They should just do something else then. Like, I, I get that they think it's a cool thing, but, like, at the same time, they're making it so ridiculously hard to then even do what is considered, I still think, to be the core identity of the Gaunt. Like, here's the thing, though. We're still going to have to make this unit because it adds so much DPS to our fights, even if they nerf the DPS to the ground. As our only, like, mid-range DPS unit that doesn't cost, like, 300 Ethereum like Hellborn do, like, there is no other option. You still have to make Gaunt. And you just have to, like, throw an effigy down somewhere and hope that the enemy doesn't see it or something like that, I guess, if you want to try to use... Plague Axes, but I'll tell you this, Plague Axes is fucking, the, the rush of that is gone. The rush of it is gone. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm really not happy with this. And again, not because Infest, like, I'm getting less Infest. It's just like, it feels like they've ripped this thing away from the gun and there's nothing to like replace the void that it's going to fill because the DPS difference is going to be massive. We'll see how it all combines together. The thing is, the things that got buffed are very expensive, so you're still not going to be able to get to them very quickly. And um, creeping is now worse. So Infernals were the best creepers in the game. When the dogs were here, they became like the worst. And then now I think they're probably going to be the best again, but we're still going to, I think it really nerfed us quite a bit actually. Our tier two just feels way worse in comparison now, I think. <clears throat> because even though Hellborn did get a buff in terms of like being able to attack target the ground, if their if they're target gets out of range, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll surprise me, maybe I'm wrong, but like... Hmm, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll just have to see. I don't, I don't know, but I, it just feels like there's a void now for tier two. How do you live versus Lancer XO? What do you do when there's like 15 XOs? I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see, I guess. I, I feel like this is this is gonna make it very struggle for infernals, but you know what? I mean, I'm not gonna focus too hard on this, guys. Even if it's, even if it really makes it not like viable for infernals for a while, it's not like they can't change this in the future. So, 
Uh, I would say overall I'm unhappy with this change because the interaction in IVI I think is going to be awful. And I think that it is counterintuitive to needing your opponent to be on Shroud instead of your own units. That just makes no sense to me. I think you make this change way, way, way more acceptable if you encourage... Like, this doesn't even encourage, like, like, like proper macro, right? Like, let's say you're now encouraged to spread Shroud around the map. I also now need my opponent to make mistakes in order for me to be able to use that. So Shroud should only be a benefit to your army. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, I shouldn't need my opponent to be on Shroud for it to do something. This just feels very backwards. So hopefully they change that because, because that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't I don't want I don't want shroud to have to be something I need literally everywhere. I want to be able to use it like I did creep essentially. This is encouraging you to to do some fucking weird stuff with shroud that's very counterintuitive. So, uh overall I think this change is not good. Specifically because I think they should make it so that I'm fine to test this out, but I think that shroud should be I, I think the change should be that your gaunts need to be on Shroud, not the enemy unit that you're attacking. Um, so yeah. I think I think that's a I think it's a bad change for this, personally. But I'm happy to be proven wrong. I'm happy for somebody to just go, oh yeah, no, dude, you just make like three of this and then you do that, and then it's like didn't didn't even matter. We'll see though. I don't feel like it's gonna happen, but we'll see. Uh, Magmadon got nerfed. This change reduces the sun of time of Magmadons from 75% to 38% while they're trampling with Demon Hoof Tremors. We felt like this stun was too punishing, especially against the Kree, particular par which partially prevented Kree from being a particularly viable frontline unit for Celestial in the IVC matchup. Weaver change, this is a very good change. In this update, we'll be reinstating the Weaver walk over other units, which we believe was one of the key reasons they weren't being used as much in the Infernal Arsenal. In addition, we received feedback that after these changes, Weaver still will not be used because of the slow movement speed in our increasingly large map sizes, so we've decided to raise the base speed slightly. Uh, Hexen, energy cost increased. This was, this was some stuff that I have mentioned before of ways that they could nerf Miasma. I feel like Miasma was a very initial shock factor. I don't feel like people are really losing to this anymore. But maybe we have to make it anyways. I don't fuck. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I feel like Mass Weaver is going to be big, though. I will say that. Because one way you could potentially get around the Gaunt change is, like, having Weavers pull everything in to your Shroud effigy or whatever. And then just, like, making fiends that way, I guess. Anyways, uh, Spriggan cost changed from 75 to 75 to 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spriggans have been one of the most underutilized units in our post EA release, partially because they simply don't deal enough damage, especially to the heavy units they're in intended to counter, such as helicarriers. Uh, in addition, we've changed their cost to be more Illuminate focused since Infernals are so commonly starved for Therium. I did not realize they meant this to be like a counter to helicarriers. I thought they were supposed to kill buildings. Oh, okay. Okay. Slash shield collection and array and prism. These changes are primarily intended to allow spectators to more easily judge the status of a match by the progression of supply counts. This was, this is huge. I kept saying like, just ignore the supply because celestial supply doesn't make any sense. Previously, Celestial supply counts were misleading because a large portion of mining was done via collection arrays that didn't cost supply. Alright, so I didn't understand this one. We received feedback that while certain Celestial upgrades were good, specifically Recall, they were difficult to research due to how far up the tech tree the Ascension Matrix is. This change allows Recall to be a more viable upgrade and this, at the same time Sabres to be more easily accessible. Okay. Argent rework, essentially. Major feedback surrounding Argent usually involve the following. Early game Argent pushes are too powerful, especially in CVC where it's too difficult to tech to a unit that can counter it. 
Argents are weaker in a metagame that focuses on early game creeping. Because their energy-based attack attacking mechanic inherently makes them ineffective at the co consistent combat. As a result of this feedback, we've ta uh, tweaked the starting stats of the Argents and their upgrades to more finely tune their strengths and weaknesses throughout the game. After these changes, we expect unupgraded Argents will be less powerful at frontal engagements, but more effective at creeping. <clears throat> Hopefully these changes will be enough such that players are more incentivized to tech to Kree as a possible counter to full Argent armies in the mirror matchup. Uh, Kree also feels like one of the most polarizing units in our army. Our thoughts are that it is sometimes slightly too powerful as an early game unit as a harassment unit throughout the game. Uh, at the same time, it's too difficult to tech into the early game in CVC and tends to fall off hard as a late game combat unit. To address these issues, we've made these changes in to other units that Krees interact with, such as Lancers, Magmadons, and, Ar and Argents. In addition, we've tweaked the Kree's stats overall to make it a bit more tanky and less damaging. These changes will allow Kree to hopefully be more effective in large-scale combat role and more viable as a transition from Argents in the mirror. <clears throat> you don't think the Infest nerf to Gaunts is as bad as we think? Nightfall Infest upgrade is massive for early game skirmish, but Nightfall's on T2, though. Cabal, debilitate duration decrease from 40 to 25. Cabals were too punishing against Vanguard players that often rely on hit and run tactics and too greatly discouraged top drop play, rather. We wanted to reduce the effectiveness of this ability against general harassment, but at the same time wanted to ensure it was still an effective counter against large units such as the Vulcan and Magmadons. In addition, we'll be giving Vanguard the ability to cast System Shock at Tier 2, which should be another strong counter to debilitate. Okay. Saber. Movement speed increased from 2 to 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar to the Weaver. Unwieldy to use. Animancer has the cooldown. Sure. So it can't recast it immediately after it's been interrupted. Sure. And Archangels. But yeah, these changes. These are just tweaks to make, like, Archangel not miserable. Isle of Dread. Added tree lines at multiple locations to limit early attack paths. Chokes in the early expansions are now more narrow. Moved and added various Therium nodes. These now are double Therium spot in the other division camp. We received a lot of feedback that Isle of Dread was the most polarizing map due to so many entryways into various locations. We've restricted the attack paths and entryways so players can enter into macro games more safely. Remove Jagged Bob from the map pool. Rest in peace, boys. Best map of, of possibly Stormgate's history getting removed. Rest in peace, guys. <clears throat> Furious Resolve added. There's a few more balance changes and bug fixes in the patch notes, so we hope you read those as well, which I just did. And with that, thanks for your continued support, and we hope to see you on the ladder. Cheers, Kevin Dog. Um, overall, I think the patch is quite good. I'm very curious to see how the changes to the Argent and the Kree affect the celestial compositions um i think that the vanguard changes are good i think that the lancer change feels fair and the scout needed a big change while the hornet i feel like needed to be less viable versus prism i still feel like graven are not ever going to be made because helicaria is still really huge i think you could accomplish this by making it tier two but then jacking up the cost to like 200 200 or something i don't know that's just like a random number i'm pulling out so don't really take that interesting to see this change on the vulcan Vulcan Rush, I think, is back. Uh, there's going to be, I think, when the patch hits, people are going to do that. So be ready for that, guys. Uh, the Insta Tier 3 Vulcan at, like, four minutes with five bobs repairing it. So just be ready for that. Uh, I'm sure I will die to it as well. The Gaunt change, I'm ready to be wrong, but I think it it's just an unintuitive change the way that they've done it. Um, regardless how you feel about Infest, I think it's cool, obviously. Like, I, I like the fiends and shit like that. Like, I think that's really neat. I understand that they're extremely strong, that you can just spawn free units in the game. It feels like Infernal's power is balanced around being able to do that, and it seems like that does just keep getting taken away from the Infernal, in that the Hexen Miasma is worse. Uh, Nightfall Infestation is on Tier 2, and the Gaunt now only applies Plague Axes if it's on Shroud. Sorry, if it's Target is on Shroud, and that's a big, big change. 
Um, I would be way, 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 way happier if this forced the Gaunt to be on Shroud, not its target. It makes no sense to me that the target has to be on Shroud, and it doesn't care if the Gaunt is on Shroud. I don't like that as a change overall. It just feels... Again, regardless how you feel about Infest, it, it, it seems counterintuitive for an Infernal player to want Shroud on their enemy and not care where it is for you. Uh, and it also makes Infernal versus Infernal a fucking wacky wild matchup where being defensive, which is the Infernal's best trait, is a huge negative since your opponent will be able to apply Infest to your units if you're playing defensively, but you will not be able to apply Infest to their units. So that just makes no sense. I think it's completely backwards. Uh, and if they just changed this one thing, I think I'd be way more all right with it. So yeah, that's my um, that's my take on the patch. Other than that, the standout changes that I'm very happy about are the Weaver and the Hellborn. Very excited to see those changes. I feel like the Weaver is going to be incredible, and I think the hotkey changes are an absolutely welcome addition to the game. Yeah. Anyways, so there you go. There you go. That's my uh, that's my patch note analysis. It took me an hour and 45 minutes. You look forward to the pathing fix? Yeah, me too. I am curious to see how that works as well. Welcome to Stormgate, where Infernal is getting more and more like Zerg. You're in a Zerg main, by the way. I'm a, I was a GM Zerg player when I played StarCraft 2. So I don't disagree with you. I just, yeah, it just feels counterintuitive for, um, for Infest. I just, I don't like this. I don't like that it's counterintuitive. It doesn't make any sense. For new players, this will never happen. Nobody will, no new player is going to read this and then go, oh, I need my, I need my opponent's stuff to be on Shroud, not my stuff. This is just, this just makes no sense to me. Like from a, from a design perspective, it just makes no sense to me at all. I don't care that, that like, again, I want to be so clear because people are just going to say, like, oh, you're just whining that Infest isn't, like, on Plague Axis now. It's, I don't, I think it's fine that it's not. I do. Or I'm at least interested to see it not be on Plague Axis natively. Um, I think it really disincentivizes people to make Gaunts regardless. But forcing your target to be on Shroud is wild. You guess they're hoping opponents play the floor as lava with shroud. Yeah, it makes no sense though. You guess they wanted the gaunt to be stronger when they are in a defensive situation where the enemy is literally shoving into your face. Yeah, except for in infernal versus infernal, where it's it's the exact opposite of that. You are never gonna want to take a fight on shroud, and you're gonna be dropping effigies on like your opponent's units. It it that's so backwards it just is like that that's nonsense to me that's nonsense that just i truly just don't think they thought of it like i have to imagine they didn't and yeah all those reasons are true if the infernal is on shroud or the gaunt is on shroud yeah i i just i just a uh i i just don't i don't feel like people are gonna make gaunts anymore is what this is going to do I don't see why I even make Gaunt's and Mirror now. I mean, if you're going to do like a Gaunt all in, it's very good, I think, to attack your opponent. It's very bad to have it defensively. Gaunt's are actually awful defensively in Infernal versus Infernal now. They will an IVI to get free units, but only aggressively. That's what makes no sense. That's the part that is completely backwards. Gaunt's still fight well minus Fiends. I mean, I'm willing to see that happen. I'm willing to see that play out. Maybe I'm truly underestimating the damage that they're going to do. But, like, just this is a mechanic. Regardless if it was strong or not, doesn't make sense. And that's where I'm, that's, that's my stance. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so. We'll see how it plays out. We'll see if I'm wrong. Um, yeah.
Also, what units are they fighting? Exos? I mean, again, it's versus light, so they're plus four damage versus light. I guess they're good versus dog spam, which is being killed in this patch. Yeah, the dogs are not going to get spammed anymore. You will just win, I think, instantly if people make dogs in this patch. Hmm. Just sucks that the movement speed upgrade is, is stuck behind a useless upgrade now. I mean, yeah, kind of. Like, the, I understand, like, wanting to still have some interaction between it, but, yeah. I, I, I truly, truly, truly hope they take... I don't know if there's any way that someone at Frost Giant can just hear the words that I'm saying. And just make it so the Gaunt has to be on Shroud and not the target. Just do that, and it, like, it feels like, okay. That makes sense to work with the rest of my units. It makes a million times more sense. It makes sense for Infernal versus Infernal when you're playing defensively. Like, it just is way more reasonable. <laughs> There's no way to do these things other than Shadowfall, which needing to wait for Tier 3 and a giant Animus Sync for my Tier 1 upgrade in order for me to infest is, is, in, is, is not possible. That's, that's not feasible. So please, if anyone hears me, if anyone at Frost Giant is here in this stream, or this somehow reaches you, please, God, please, make it this part. Infest if the target is on Shroud. Just make it so that the Gaunt has to be on Shroud. Just change that one thing, and I think I will. you will not get a complaint from me. It'll sound more fair. Dropping effigies in battle will feel way more rewarding. Uh, it just won't feel like this weird, I don't know, thing that you have to drop in the enemy's face and then hope they don't attack it. You're going to see, like, actual being able to d be defensive. Like, it, it, it just seems like it works way better as a change. Please, God. Please. Please do that. And, and Infernal versus Infernal, while I have your ear, this is going to make Infernal versus Infernal weird, man. It's going to make it so weird. That means that attacking Gaunts are better versus defending. Because if I'm attacking into my opponent and they're defending on Shroud, I get to have Infest and they don't. And that's crazy. That's crazy. That's nuts. That's nuts. <laughs> so please try that out. Try. I don't know. Do it internally first. I don't even care. Do it internally first. And then let me know what you think.